Hello, everyone. Welcome. I am so grateful that you're joining us today to hear about how we use HR and workplace service delivery solutions in transforming the flow of work here at ServiceNow. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you. Uh, we have uh, me presenting today. My name is Sumeya Khan. I'm a senior director here in the CIO's org, leading people technology and employee journey. Uh, and we also have Nate, my colleague. Hi, everybody. And as, again, to echo what Samaya uh, just kicked us off with, super grateful for you carving out the time to spend with us today. Uh, as I mentioned, my name is Nate Aschenbach. I, I have the, uh, the great opportunity to lead the digital technology for finance organization as part of our CIO organization as well. Awesome. Um, one thing that's really interesting about us being on this rocket ship, I've been here three years, and Nate, I think you've been here about a year? One year. Is that right? One year. Um, we we actually work on so many different things, and um, want to clarify a little bit of, uh, you know, what's what the webinar today speaks to. Uh, from my end, it's the hire to retire HR technology stack. So everything from career site to applicant tracking system, onboarding, all the way through offboarding, all of those processes and technologies sit in my world. Um, and and what's uh, what's very important about this is that. Um, employees at all levels uh, who focus on making work better for each other uh, and trying to enable scale, anyone who wants to automate or simplify what's happening inside your own company, um, this is what the webinar is for today. Um, so the goal is employees can go back to their important high value work faster versus hunting and pecking for things that they need to get done in the day to day flow of work. Um, so you're seeing on the slide here on the left, uh, from my perspective, uh, the chief people officer or chief human resources officer, any direct reports, so that whole leadership team is who I serve within ServiceNow. Mm -hmm. um, also the CIO's org where, where Nate and I sit. Um, and so anyone who's in that IT for GNA leadership position, these are very important topics for us on our, on our day job, um, as well as any employee experience leaders, both within HR or IT, depending on how your, your teams are structured. And then lastly, my, my biggest partners in crime within ServiceNow are uh, HR operations um, and uh, what we call our care team, those folks who are actually out there as HR agents delivering to our employees day to day. So these are the folks we enable, um, and we feel this is the most important way to, to talk a little bit about their, their day job as well. Uh, Nate, I'll hand it to you for, for your stack. Sure. So our key stakeholders on the finance in the finance space is our CFO, Gina, and her direct reports. Uh, that's made up of chief accounting officers and a number of other vice presidents across the finance space. Um, in our space, uh, our, what we're seeing a really big shift in is really wanting to improve the employee experience around some of these core systems that we have in the GNA functions, not just finance, but some in the in the GNA functions. And if, to echo again, Samaya's perspective on really bringing a broader, more enjoyable consumer grade experience to all employees. A lot of those core systems were built for subject matter experts. And what we're seeing is we want to enable people to do things quicker and at scale. And so that's really what our focus and shift that we're seeing in our finance organizations. We'll touch briefly on a couple of really specific products that we have that we've been leveraging. Uh, ESG is environmental, social, and governance, uh, procurement services, and so on and so forth. Awesome. Well, I think, Nate, you've covered a bit of the agenda here today. We'll talk a lot about challenges we were seeing, how that transformation has worked, and um, key takeaways for you to kind of get started quickly um, because we understand, again, as practitioners, so both Nate and I, um, our work is focused on improving uh, the the day to day lives of our employees. Um, in my three years here, I've seen us grow from about eight thousand employees to twenty thousand plus, and we are on a on a very rapid uh, growth trajectory. We call it being on the rocket ship here. For anyone who joins, um, that growth has us on an incredible journey, as you can imagine. Um, really going for for Nate and I at least going beyond the usual IT roles, and for my HR counterparts, and I'm sure for finance counterparts for Nate, going way beyond those execution roles for features and roadmaps, and and just sort of um, turning things on, because where we're focused is constantly innovating um, and stretching ourselves to look at how we make that life of an employee better, 
um, anything from a basic basic process like improving an invoice or uh, a, rec a job requisition to joining a com our company as an excited new hire and ramping up the first 90 days and getting to value a lot faster. So there's a whole lot of um, structural and um, you know not just technology but process that we look at together with our various counterparts. And it's an entire transformation about the way that we think. Um, number one, I would say putting employees at the center of everything we do is is easy to say, but it's a little hard to do, especially with a little bit of red tape that most companies have. Um, and so we'll talk about how we've tried to cut through that and um, and use our own platform here at ServiceNow to enable it. Um, Nate, anything you would add to that before we dig in? No, no, I think you, you captured it great. Get us kicked off. All right. So this slide that you're seeing on the screen is a bit of our um, top line of how, how we do some of these things. Uh, we've had um, some challenges internally in the years that I've been here too, where employees, again, having to hunt and peck for information, lots of platforms, like Nate said, that are meant as systems of record, um, you know, where employees aren't really sure where to ask for help, which system is gonna help them deliver on their HR or finance or other types of needs. Um, one thing that happens very quickly is that our HR business partners at least get inundated with small questions. Um, and we look at the operational overhead of that, ha adding a lot of folks just to answer those questions or even address cases as they were coming through um, versus what could have been very easy self-service for a lot of these questions. So we focused on um, these key principles that you're seeing. So reducing complexity, especially for our new hire and manager personas. So lots of personas out there we could focus on, but for us, those two um, are top of the stack and, and we spend a lot of our energy prioritizing uh, processes for those folks. Um, for practitioners, there's a whole lot of complexity on the back end uh, with manual work they're doing. Um, and I'll, I'll sort of draw a delineation here. Um, at times it's easy to say we're helping the employee experience, but what about the experience of our uh, fulfillers um, like our finance folks or our HR agents or recruiters. So a lot of the work uh, for Nate and I is the automation aspect. Um, and we'll talk about how our platform works with that as well. But the key thing I would mention is that one-stop shop or experience layer. We use our now ServiceNow platform uh, as that. And today we'll do a demo of what our portal looks like, our employee portal. Um, we don't have multiple portals. We don't have service portals here and other types of portals there. It's just one portal that brings everyone together in a unified place. Um, and we've obviously been on a journey to get there, uh, but it is um, an amazing uh, transformation of how people think and act, especially in, in service to that self-service that we were talking about. Um, the other principle we follow very closely is maximizing our investments. So now platform, as I mentioned, plus those systems of record like HCM, which in our case is Workday. Um, and Nate, I'll, I'll let you talk a little bit about the ERP on the Better Together side as well. Yeah, so in the ERP space, what we're really leveraging our platform in, in, in doing is really pulling out customizations and extensions. What we've okay. seen over, I think, a lot of our experiences both as business partners and technologists is to be able to solve the gaps that some of these uh, core systems have, we have to customize. And it's really hard to find great talent to come in and customize your ERP or HCM. When you do that, we create technical debt, which slows down our ability to upgrade, advance the platform and take, take advantage of key features and functionality. So what we've really been on a mission is pulling out those customizations and ex extensions, which allows us to provide that single employee experience that Samaya mentioned, but also reducing our technical debt, which is helping us maximize our investments and bringing the finance community in my space, those capabilities that, that, that are promised through some of these core systems. Absolutely. And one other thing I'll mention that I think is tied to us uh, shifting our mindset and structure, in fact, the way the teams are built, we built our teams to focus on end users by actually bringing in um, researchers uh, uh, to, to inform how we do our design thinking. So we have UX designers, we have researchers, and we have product managers all within the CIO's org that are focused on 
driving with data. So um, not just again, going and turning on features on the now platform or really any other platform, um, but really thinking about the end to end experience and solutioning from start to finish um, and then iterating from there versus um, where you know other places that we've seen this uh, type of work we talk about employee experience, but may not be actually focusing on the end user. So that's been a shift for us, hiring those people, retaining them, building the right structures for them. Um, and then all of the internal processes, um, letting us prioritize with our partners on the HR finance and, and other functional sides to really focus on the highest priorities. Um, and I think that's the part that takes most of my time, probably Nate's as well, um, that as leaders we're spending time making sure our technical resources are focused on the right things to move the needle for those personas as I mentioned, new hires and managers first and, and many others to follow. Um, so I, I feel like I, I wanna make sure that point is crystal clear because it is not just a bring in the right technology and invest in that technology and it'll magically change everything. Um, that front end of focusing on the right things, building the right teams, and um, it, you know, giving them all the right toolkit matters most. And then from there, we've seen acceleration in our digital transformation efforts. Um, start and move quickly is another principle internally. Um, our, our leaders here, especially our CIO and our chief people officer, I would argue probably our, our CFO as well, um, want us to move quickly. Uh, one of the ways that we do that is truly configure out of the box, uh, especially the now platform with employee center, um, a lot of our HR service delivery platform as well. Um, but get creative on some of the workflows that we've built very quickly. Um, and later in this conversation, we'll talk a little bit about how we do that and which ones we've uh, built typically, you know, six to eight weeks end to end from ideation through to delivery. Um, and, and we test a lot and iterate from there. Um, and lastly, I'll talk a little bit about enabling scale. So uh, we talked about automation briefly, but one thing that we are um, in a whole movement around is this low code, no code, uh, using our own platform. And, and Nate, I'd love for you to talk a little about that and how you're seeing that play out in the finance world. Yeah, and, and it's a great story and it's something that I it really excited to brag about, about our finance community. And it's really leveraging App Engine uh, to really promote a citizen development program. Um, that is really hitting on really pillars three and four that Samaya took us through, which is through about four and a half days of training that could be spread out over time. We've got access to a new talent pool in the finance business community, which argues replace finance with any business function, um, who is now doing low code, no code deployment, everything from corporate card request forms uh, to uh, that require workflows and some approvals. Um, what we've done that is we've also respected that it's not the wild, wild west, uh, because as, as mentioned, there is some red tape in some of the, some of our functions that we have that we need to follow. So not every case is great for citizen development, but we've got checkpoints where we inter where we have citizen development partner with our digital technology team, our, our respective teams to make sure that it's not too big, not too complex, and that it's following some of our standards that we have. But it's been a great, uh, a great way to bring technology to a functional domain. And what we're ultimately seeing is it's a talent attractor to some of these functions. Uh, we always joke sometimes in the finance community, folks will come out of undergrad at, with, aspiring to be a CPA. They'll, we challenge them to see a problem and fix a problem. This is a way for them to fix it themselves and drive quick solutions. Love that. Thank you. Um, and I, I know one thing that's on here at the very end is this culture of continuous improvement. Um, this is a tough one because everybody wants to get everything done. Um, and an MVP, we were finding minimally viable product. The definition depends on who you ask. So again, I think Nate and I and many of our leaders internally spend time making sure that we've all got the same design thinking and agile hats on and that we are scoping things to, again, configure out of the box, get creative, move quickly. And then once there is value defined and we're finding value in what we've we've gone live with, we're iterating from there. So that's been another mindset shift for us um, to develop that culture and um, really cultivate it within our teams as well. Um, 
One thing that I, I want to get a little deeper into, we mentioned um, self-service and removing complexity, but on the left, you're seeing uh, our, our select employee personas that I, I hinted at. We use the ServiceNow platform for our employee portal, but also index very heavily on the, the virtual agent as well as live agent and then the mobile app. So internally, we're not using a whole lot of different mobile apps for different vendors or systems of record. Our employees are asked to go to the employee center or employee portal on ServiceNow and action almost everything that they could need there. So anything from onboarding their new employees uh, to approving uh, requisitions, invoices, as I mentioned. Um, I'll, I'll showcase a little bit more of what that looks like, but everything has been kind of brought together as a one-stop shop because we're seeing employees are looking for that consumerized experience um, versus having to have clunky uh, work experiences, even though in their personal life, you know, everything is a, a couple of clicks and they've got it done. So we spend a lot of time focused on that. What that means is in the HR space, our system of record workday, we have not enabled self-service there. Um, we only point our employees to workday when it has to do with compensation processes, um, like our annual compensation review or uh, on-demand compensation. Um, majority of all the other self-service they need is happening on our own platform. On the other hand, we've got this principle of keeping our fulfiller personas right in their system of record. So a lot of the case management um, and dispositioning, of course, is happening within ServiceNow as it is. Uh, but for SAP and Workday, a lot of that, this is this is the system they love and, and know, and that's what they, they live in day to day. Um, but that this kind of separation between the personas and the principles that we're talking about have helped us in decision making. So you know, as I talked a little about Workday, we haven't enabled self-service there, but what that allows us to do on the build versus buy decisions that we make for, for various processes, um, most often we will go with ServiceNow as that layer where we're having people fulfill what they need and then have built automations, um, as, as Nate said, using integration hub and out of the box connectors uh, to Workday and other systems. It really helps us, again, that principle you heard about you know, moving quickly, getting started quickly, um, and allowing us to keep people with, with ease and complexity um, answering their questions. Um, Nate, was there anything else you would add here from your end? Nope. All right. So uh, one other thing I wanted to, to talk a little about is our employee journey. So we, we mentioned onboard, you know, hiring, onboarding, all the way through offboarding. These are the big categories of our journey that we look at. Um, there are a lot of moments that matter as we, we label them within this. Um, but when it comes to enabling people coming into the company, um, empowering them for learning or offboarding or becoming an alumnus, um, everything in between, like Manager Success Center, which I'll demo in a few moments here, um, but especially connecting them. So we have a lot of belonging groups. Um, we use Facebook as our uh, workplace, as our social uh, kind of gathering hub, but a lot of that is surfaced within our employee portal on ServiceNow so that we're capturing people in the portal that they live in um, and seeing all the news and sort of recommendations right on the ServiceNow portal versus having again to go hunt and peck. Um, and then there's a whole lot of work going on here, Nate, I know in your space for ESG and, and other areas for Inspire Me. So I'll let you talk a little bit about that as well. Thank you. Yeah. So one of the biggest things that we uh, that we are seeing with incoming talent is how do you, how, how do I say it is it, employees want to make sure that who they're going to work for and the brand is really focused on what they say they are doing. And what we're doing to do that is we're surfacing and mining the data in the three verticals or pillars of environmental, social and governance. So we've, we've got our own particular tool or a purpose-built tool that we've been deploying uh, where it really establishes our corporate goals when it comes to where are we going to move the KPIs or the needles when it comes to those three pillars of E, S, or G. What it does is we'll also leverage our integration hub and in scanning out into the different transactional systems because we know that those core systems or transactional systems reside all throughout the corporation as well as outside and potentially third parties. And what we're doing is being able to expose this 
to our employees for accountability for our leadership, accountability for, corporate, for us as a corporation, but also to allow the employee to see themselves and participate in moving those KPIs and needles in those three pillars. And you're seeing other things here that are key attributes. Um, I talked a bit about some of these, but personalization and being AI driven uh, is very big in our principles internally. So a lot of recommendations being surfaced, um, a lot of uh, nudges coming through. And at the moment, uh, my team is focused on building uh, a lot of ServiceNow um, interaction layer with learning as well as career development. So. Um, are, are you know really pushing which type of content is going to be needed by that employee at the right moment if they're moving roles or if they're going into um, a new team or anything of that nature is coming through the ServiceNow platform to get that recommendation and really um, meet them where they are in their flow of work. Um, so the outcomes we're focused on, we have a lot of measures internally, as you can imagine, employee voice survey is one of them, um, but our, uh, you know, attrition rates we look at, we look at a lot of our hiring data, uh, engagement, um, all of that are the, the outcomes that we're focused on. And um, one thing we were curious about, uh, as you're kind of listening in and taking time out of your day to, to chat with us, we were curious if attracting and retaining talent is going to continue to be a priority for your company into the next year. This is a poll. Um, would love for you to to give us your thoughts. Um, the the choices are yes, no, and unsure. Um, and we'll keep this poll open for a couple minutes as as we talk about um, for us in terms of this talent advantage. Um, our biggest focus areas have really been as you as you hear about how quickly we're growing, bringing in um, the the best talent uh, as we call it nines or tens. So hiring is a, is a big area of focus for us. And then all of the internal processes and moments that matter that I mentioned for retention, uh, but learning and development, as you're hearing me talk about, is a big focus area. And uh, just frictionless experiences so that people can focus on their day job um, versus all of, the, all of the back and forth that happens. Um, Nate, uh, from your standpoint, as you're thinking about uh, the CFO's agenda, um, how does this question fit uh, your world it, it's it is one of gina's top priorities is attracting and retaining key talent um like we're seeing in many of our different functions around the business what employees or candidates seek out of an employer are constantly changing and so we've got to give that one unified view experience and frictionless uh journey to any potential candidate and or employee. And so it is a top priority for, for our finance organization and, and our CFO. Okay. Well, it looks like we have quite a few of you having given this uh, response and it looks like almost everybody overwhelmingly looks at this as a priority going into 2023 as well. Uh, we are in the same boat. And uh, again, hyper growth for us um, is, you know, this is the main job that Nate and I have and, and others have within the company. Um, so, you know, next thing what we wanted to showcase was actually a demo of what our employee portal looks like. Um, this is a, uh, uh, you know, something that we are very proud of. We've used our own um, ServiceNow Employee Center product, and um, you'll also see a whole lot of uh, different pieces of onboarding and other uh, applications that are, again, out of the box and um, very quick and simple to, to turn on and work from. Um, so what you're seeing on the screen right now is um, our new employee center. Um, you're seeing the, the campaign functionality banner here at the very top, which we cycle through new content uh, on a recurring basis. Um, any sort of um, news information, anything like that that needs to be captured, uh, uh, benefits, enrollment, anything else comes, comes here at the top. Um, and I'll kind of do a walkthrough of what this looks like. Again, most of this is out of the box for Employee Center. Um, some of the look and feel, as you know, is configurable for those who have seen that product. Um, and these are just our new brand colors, and that's that's what you're seeing on the screen. Um, what, what is very popular on our portal is being able to see your personalized to-do list, uh, both as an individual contributor and a manager. So seeing anything that's overdue, and these could be um, learnings, they could be invoices that need to be approved or 
um, uh, travel and expense approvals. Um, all of that is captured here. And uh, again, what's most popular is Approval Central because we're able to show those here on the portal as well as um, have a mobile notification at the same time for, for addressing approve or reject in the flow of work um, or receive it in your email inbox. Um, never have to go into the system of record like, again, the, the concur system or our applicant tracking system to be able to hit approve, um, but see it all in one place. Um, one thing I mentioned earlier was our use of um, a different social platform, and that's integrated here so that you can see all of your posts, either company-wide um, or being able to see them just for the CIO's org in my case or my specific location. So these are um, a good way to see some of the belonging groups and other things that I'm part of and see the news there. You're also seeing widgets here. Um, again, all these are configurable. So we've just kind of pulled in my growth because that is a big part of our uh, chief people officers talent agenda this year. Um, we have our learning experience platform here, um, goals and growth, which we've, act we've actually built on the ServiceNow platform. This was something that took us about six weeks to build a goal setting um, uh, app where the entire company is uh, putting in their goals and aligning with their managers and it's happening right here on the portal. And you can also browse internal career site um, along with uh, you know, being able to apply directly. Um, one thing that we've uh, seen a lot of success with for manager persona is this manager success center. Um, and I'll, I'll dig into this a little bit deeper here in the demo, but it allows managers to see at a glance across the entire journey where their employees sit and resources curated from knowledge uh, articles, um, as well as connections to the learning management system. So everything is in one place for that manager to be able to disposition. Um, you're also seeing ServiceNow News. So again, just to pause and say, this portal is our single portal. <laughs> we do not have another service portal or anything else we push people to. So a lot of that, um, kind of the old idea of an intranet or different types of service areas people would go to is all been combined here into one uh, strategy so that we're, we're serving people as a one-stop shop. You're also seeing here a widget, Nate, I would love for you to talk about this workplace status uh, widget and, and talk a little bit about WSD here. Yeah, sure. So uh, the, the second part of the webinar here that we're gonna chat about is specifically our workplace service delivery that we'll get to in more detail, but this is another widget uh, that Samia mentioned, where we give access to folks to get comfortable, to feel safe about coming into an office. This could be anybody's assigned office or an office that they're coming to for a given pop-up meeting or impromptu meeting and or if employees are traveling. So what we do through workplace services, we, we, uh, tr we track travel requests and we proactively nudge or bump our employees to, to, to say, hey, we recognize you're gonna be traveling overseas to a customer visit. We know you're gonna be visiting this office in the area. Why don't you book a reservation? Why don't we look at any local statutory requirements that we may have uh, that may be required and proactively load? And all of that could be both done here on the, on the, uh, the internal portal, but also on, on our mobile app. And so um, this is also where employees come to see what the latest you know, statutory requirements are to come back into an office, what to expect, what we are doing as a company to make sure that there is a safe workplace, uh, as well as reservations, bookings, mappings, tools, all of those types of uh, capabilities right from uh, the portal here. Yeah. I love this. This actually means that I get to sit in my car right before entering the building on the same morning and book my neighborhood space before I go in to see Nate for a meeting. Um, it's one of my favorite things. But um, on this portal, you're also seeing several microsites that were built using Microsite Builder. So a little bit of a low code, no code um, directly on the portal. Uh, like the global impact site related to what Nate was mentioning earlier. And then a couple other things that are out of the box, um, these popular topics based on the highest search results um, uh, that we're getting from employees, benefits and well-being in particular, is a very dispersed space. So this topic page is curated, took about a week with our HR folks and um, has all of the, uh, the the knowledge base articles and requests that you could need curated into one page so that people can access that, um, given that we know from the data they're looking for a lot of this information at their fingertips. Um, a couple other things I'll mention here right on the main page. Um, 
speaking of what is top of search um, inputs from employees, the next holiday for that particular country, um, for that employee is the number one search. Um, and so we've surfaced that here. This is an integration to Workday um, and this is personalized as well. So there's a lot of um, kind of persona based, geography based uh, personalization going on on the portal. Um, and that we've seen really contributes to the stickiness and people coming back and believing that it really is a one stop shop. Um, a couple other things I just wanted to quickly highlight in this demo, we've got, uh, I mentioned Manager Success Center. So this is for a manager persona. Uh, me as a manager or a leader, I get to see uh, this in particular for my employees. Um, you can see open jobs here um, because we have uh, our applicant tracking system integrated and part of our principles actually has us creating a new job requisition directly on our employee portal. So even for that, for a hiring manager, we are not asking them to go into our ATS to open that requisition. We're having it all happen here. Um, and that uh, that request, it, it, it kicks off um, an, a workflow where all the approvals and the requisition is opened automatically on the back end. Um, so there's a lot of really positive uh, feedback on this from our, our hiring managers, especially because you get the training here, again, as I mentioned, directly connected to our LMS, and then all of the resources they may need from our knowledge uh, management directly in this part of the journey. Um, same applies to onboarding and ramp up. So you're seeing here um, new employees that may be starting, how far along they are um, on their onboarding, which we use our own HR service delivery um, products for. Um, as well as ramp up, which is journey management. And this is the first 90 days of an employee being with us. All of their to do's and tasks are, are curated here. So you're kind of seeing that view between the, the two types as a, as a new employee is coming in. Um, when I mentioned goal setting earlier, this is a bit of a view on what that looks like. So I can see a dashboard uh, here of who's uh, you know approved versus completed their, their various goals. And again, just like with the other parts of the employee journey, we have all the resources and training in one place. Um, one thing that we have very recently launched internally using our lifecycle events or journey management is offboarding. So this is again, all um, workload on the back end and the integrations are, are making a lot of automations possible for HR um, so that everything is following the journey of an employee leaving the company. It's all initiated on the portal here and then the manager is, is tracking it here as well. So I, um, I could share a lot here, but I'll, I'll stop sharing and I'm happy to answer any questions as we get toward the, the back uh, half here of the, uh, the webinar. Um, but uh, coming back into our slides just very quickly before I hand off to Nate, when I mentioned onboarding using our own platform for this, we've had tremendous success on the value measures and the MPS from employees. Um, from, from my perspective, if there's uh, limited resources uh, in your company, this is the place to really make your mark. Um, given that new hires come in and are blown away by this completely um, kind of automated experience, they're able to do a few tasks and they're done with their onerous onboarding, whether it's documents or picking their laptop. Um, and so this would be the place that I would focus first globally because it allows your employees to kind of get to value much faster. Um, and then from there kind of work on other processes. Um, I mentioned offboarding, this is what the request form looks like. So everything's been um, kind of curated here from across the globe, all the different country requirements. And uh, we've seen a really great decrease in offboarding cycle time in the months that we've just launched this in 2022 and 73% uh, reduction in cost for offboard as well. And then lastly, I mentioned goal setting um, that was built on our platform um, as a workflow within six weeks. And this one, um, we've had 92% satisfaction and 84% of our employees align their goals this year using this uh, application. So highly successful and, um, and high satisfaction as well. So Nate, I will hand it over to you here for this next poll. Yeah, we're on to our next poll. So we'll do a quick pulse, we may not, uh... We'll ask everybody to take a look. What is your biggest transformation priority right now? Is it rethinking how we work, enhancing the employee experience, flexible work options, or better utilizing, utilizing our data? So to fill, to fill a little bit of the, the time for folks to chime in on the survey, 
one real interesting thing that we've seen on returning back to the office is that statistically just a little over a third of our employee base at ServiceNow had never been to an office, meaning they're coming to a campus, they're coming to a building, they're coming to a floor that they're not familiar with. We recognize that as some friction, as a potential reason why uh, an employee may not come into the office. And so we've spent a lot of time partnering with our product team and our finance, uh, finance community, which is where workplace services lands in our organization, to really identify all those areas of friction and to better understand uh, what we can do to reduce friction so that if people feel safe, they can come back into the office to collaborate, connect, create community and promote culture that we have. So, okay, I'll advance the slide. So overwhelming, enhancing the employee experience seems to be a common theme or a, a, the winner, the winner. And then secondarily, it looks like we've got rethinking how we work. So which is a great segue into uh, our, our WSD storyline. Here's a couple quick stats. Uh, you know, 75% of our hybrid and remote knowledge workers agree their expectations are going to increase on working hybrid and working remote. You can see a generational breakdown of how what that looks like when we've been benchmarking the ind industry. And really to reference back to Samea's uh, recruits and candidates on onboarding, this is an expectation. This is an expectation of our talent that's coming in the door that we're seeing is they want options. They want flexibility. They want that as a deciding criteria to come join a brand or a company. And so it's really important that we are able to support and accommodate different ways of working. So when we look at the digital transformation of the workplace, I'll kind of go counterclockwise. We're really rethinking the way that we work through communal spaces, uh, making sure that we maximize our real estate footprint, understanding the consumption of the resources that are in a given facility. We wanna elevate that employee experience. Just as Samaya jokingly said, I show up to the front door, I book my reservation, I expect my badge to work immediately. That's an employee experience. Uh, we did a pretty extensive integration between booking a reservation with our badging system so that we made sure that all the criteria was met, but trying to reduce the friction of having to scan a QR code and advancing that into our badging system. We're constantly evolving and innovating the flexible work models to be able to co accommodate the different personas that we see uh, in, in our population. One of the key things that is top of mind for all of us is really helping to ensure that we have a safe and compliant workspace for everybody. We wanna make sure we identified safety as another area of friction of coming or returning back into an office. So we wanted to be able to be very transparent on what the guidelines are. We wanted to be able to show that how we were meeting local compliance uh, guidelines based on a county a state, a country, or a region, so that employees had a sense of safety and understanding, but also that we were also able to report out compliance and visibility, which leads us into visibility and automation. Uh, and so this provided us a number of, of data elements uh, from, as I mentioned, the compliance and the safety component, but also when it comes to consumption of resources. Through our, our use of workplace service delivery, we are able to understand the consumption of a floor, the consumption of different types of workspaces, the consumption of conference rooms, the way people were starting to work. And that data, that, that, that pool of data allows multiple different groups to make decisions. What should our real estate plan look like? We, we said we want folks to return to office in a flexible manner. Are employees taking advantage of that? Are we seeing people who make reservations, but at a last minute don't come in through badging? And so we're able to, through anonymized, understand the flow of people in a lot of these workplaces. So we leverage our, our, our own product uh, for that unified experience. I've mentioned a couple of these, everything from navigating workspaces for all those new employees that are coming to a office for the first time to reserving workplaces, getting visitors in, which was a whole new experience with all the new uh, the regulations, guidelines, and rules, even submitting vaccinations, as well as requesting all those different types of services uh, that are needed once you get into the office. Submitting vaccinations was a very interesting 
thing that we needed to be agile on. I think we all saw varying rules that were coming and going and shifting based on the waves that we saw in, during the, in the pandemic. We needed the ability to, at that county, state, and country level, turn on different capabilities at different times based on different uh, guidance from different organizations. And so we were able to do that through configuration, not even through development efforts to be able to meet those local uh, statutory rules. Also, a really big component of this is, is working mobile, uh, allowing for access to safe workplace, a case management. So if individuals find that something's broken, not working, able to file cases for our workplace services organization to jump on and start uh, managing those uh, broken assets or, or broken uh, challenges. Uh, and I've also talked about visitors and workplace reservations. Where do we see the future going? We're going further into space management. In the workplace services, space is a foundational component of everything. And so we're, uh, we acquired a company and we're integrating this in the next couple of releases of our product to where we will have guided navigation in buildings from workplace to workplace, as well as building to building on campuses for those larger organizations that have bigger spread out uh, working areas. To take a quick look at what else we're focusing on in FY22 on the NOW platform, I'll turn it over to Samaya to, to take a look, to talk through the first couple. Here. Sure, yeah, I, I um, talked a little bit about some of these as we were walking through the demo, but of course we could spend hours and hours together and not go through the fun of all this stuff. But um, on the source and hire front, because again, we're growing as quickly as we are, we have service now as that requisition creation, approvals and tracking sort of experience layer um, wrapping around our applicant tracking system. Um, on the career site side, we've actually built chatbots both for external career site and internal career site so that um, that sort of virtual agent feel is happening um, even in the hiring process for candidates. Um, one thing that's been extremely exciting internally is that offer calculator is a gap in the market. We weren't able to find anything that would help our recruiters and our compensation team connect outside of Excel spreadsheets. Um, and so we've built on the on the now platform um, a calculator that, that's integrated to Workday, it shows positions and range, it shows internal benchmarking, and we're able to model offers before they go out to candidates uh, directly on the platform. Um, and there's a lot more here in the grow and retain column. Um, as I was mentioning, this is a big focus for us in 22 and 23. Um, we are working with the product team so that most of this is going to start coming into the productized version of HR service delivery. So totally safe harbor on everything I'm, I'm saying, but there is quite a lot here that's being built in partnership with products so that all of this will be available um, in the roadmap for them as well. And um, other employee moments, uh, I'll mention employee change requests, offboarding, um, anything that employees are doing to go to different cost centers, different managers, get promoted, get into a new role, all of that is happening on our portal and the workflow is utilizing basic out of the box functionality in the HR product not for ServiceNow so that all of those different pieces on the back end can be uh, workflowed. In, and instead, if I'll just mention really briefly here, if that is done just in Workday, it doesn't allow us the ability to um, disposition things or get approvals or all the different process flow that happens on the workplace services side or happens in finance, cost center changes, all of that. So what we've used ServiceNow for is at that much higher level as the experience layer as we keep talking about it so that we're able to kind of knit together everything and that system of record can, um, can do the work on the back end versus forcing people to go and log into each one. Um, yep. So Nate, hopefully that covers uh, my yeah. side. Thank you, thank you. And, and from, the, from the workplace services area, what we've really focused on is really the world of work. We had been calling it the future of work, but as we saw employees returning, we are in the future. You saw the statistics. A lot of folks question hybrid, we're living hybrid. So it's no longer the future, we're in the world of work. And what does that mean? We look at the world of work of after getting folks into the office or into a workspace, how do they collaborate differently? And that's where our focuses are really moving towards is how to focus people connect. 
How do people know when are the optimal times if they choose to have a personal connection or to collaborate in person? How are we enabling that? And so that's been really our big focus on the WSD product space is, is that world of work. Once we get folks into the door, uh, how do they connect and how do they collaborate? Mm -hmm. So to bring it home, we just wanted to reflect on kind of three high level key takeaways. Number one, prioritize. Make improving the employee experience a strategic imperative. We recognize this is a challenge in a lot of organizations. We're thrown a lot of different priorities, but until the company or your organization makes it a priority to say, I want to focus on employee experience, it, it's gonna be hard to move the needle. Second is achieve, meet employees where they work with a robust and flexible system of engagement. Recognize that I think you may have heard Samaya and I talk about it. We have a lot of day jobs. We also have a lot of secondary jobs. I think we're all in the same boat with that. So the easier and the more exp expedited, robust, flexible uh, system we can provide to our employees, the more they can focus on what they were originally hired to do and measure. Define and track your desired outcomes. That's really only gonna help per perpetuate and support steps one and two to show that you're actually able to move the needle. So we also wanna recognize if you wanna learn more about now and now, we've got some website links here that are accessible to everybody. If you wanna learn more about the expanded uh, platform, uh, you can go to any of these sites. If not, reach out uh, to your sales contact uh, and, and ask the specific questions. Right now, we're gonna transition into the Q and A uh, part of the webinar and do wanna say super appreciative and grateful. We've got a, a number of great, great, rich questions. So uh, to, to get one started, uh, let me see. Here's one, uh, what is the employee experience if an employee on the ServiceNow portal but wanted to update personal information such as address, change in workday, success factors without being logged into two systems? Yeah, I will take that one. So um, this is connected to a bunch of other questions I'm actually seeing from people as well. So um, yes, the portal is, that, that portal that I demoed is the place where everyone comes to do IT tickets that they or requests, incidents, whatever else is going on in their world, um, as well as HR uh, case management. So they're submitting inquiries for sensitive data or benefits, et cetera. Um, for this particular question, um, we have created uh, a workflow and a request form that um, you can fill in either through virtual agent, so the bot, or you can do it directly on the portal in a form, um, but you put that request in and that's how you tackle that from the portal versus again, having to log into Workday. Um, and the other thing I'll just mention too is there's a, there's a lot of questions here about um, kind of the ticketing system out of the portal. We're using HR case management um, for those HR inquiries because they are so sensitive and employees tend to put in um, information without realizing sometimes about uh, a medical need or compensation or whatever into those inquiries. So those are being tackled um, again, initiated through the portal and all of the notifications and the pr uh, progress for those are coming not both through portal and through mobile and email. So all of that is connected. And the reason why it works so well is all the systems are talking to each other and, and, it, and it works aw awesome, right? Um, the other thing that we do uh, that, that we're working on is actually integrating to Teams, which is what we use internally, Microsoft Teams, so that you can get your um, kind of progress uh, there. A lot of people are, are spending their time there um, day to day. Uh, and you can give feedback on your case when it closes, both for IT and HR, um, inside Teams so that we have more data on where we need to improve. Awesome, thank you. So sticking on the theme of portal, we have another question. Having it all in one portal is a goal. Is there a process by which we can launch ServiceNow as the platform, but have links to our legacy applications until such time where we can build the workflows in ServiceNow? Yes, so this is a journey, it's such a great question because it's a journey you're gonna go on. There's gonna be a, um, there's gonna be a link farm first and we've gone through that, right? Then there's gonna be a, um, kind of a, an intranet or a bunch of portals coming together and, and all of that. So it's gonna be very doable. Um, the, the product on the ServiceNow side is Employee Center. It's built to be extremely sort of drag and drop and quick 
configuration. So you can easily do that. Um, we still have some places on our portal where we have links because we need to, you know, to, to show people how to get there. Um, I didn't demo this, but the benefits and well-being topics page that I mentioned is a perfect example of this because it is a way to curate those links and um, not just to apps like various benefits apps in this example, but to knowledge articles where you're pointing people to answers where they can self-service. Um, so yes, that is easily doable. The product is employee center and um, it is extremely easy to use. There's not a lot of customization required. Yeah, and the plus one, I think that the change management journey to work with an employee base to go to one location needs to start immediately. And through our platform and being able to link to different areas will help organizations start on that change management journey to get folks to think self-service first. Let me inquire. Let me see if there's a knowledge article first. Let me see if there's other lessons learned, et cetera, is really that first step. And that's what we've seen as part of our, our journey of uh, change management is getting folks to think the employee portal it, or employee center is the one place to go for everything. And we recognize all those other core systems, source systems, third party apps, homegrown are not gonna you know, go away. And so it's really a long-term uh, journey. Got another question. This seems to be well-suited for HQ workers, those mm -hmm. in the front of a laptop all day. How are you building out experiences to account for frontline or hourly workers? Yeah, very good question. We've actually, um, as part of the Now on Now um, program, so as our, again, like Nate said, our day job is enabling employees internally, but we do talk a lot to customers who are trying to figure out how they make things work in their own world. Um, and so we've worked with, a, I personally worked with a lot of companies that have factories um, or storefronts and the employee center is actually the best place for them to uh, to go because you can have a, a simple kiosk set up with um, you know just a huge search bar because of the the search capability that's embedded in the employee center, uh, but also just a couple of big boxes that say, "Hey, I need an address change." Whatever the the data tells you are your top requests for your poor. HR person in that plant or assigned to that territory um, and uh, let people take care of that directly there. So click on that button and tackle things just the way that you saw on the corporate kind of website. Um, similar applies to onboarding. So I highly recommend that for uh, because you don't actually need um, company um, equipment in order to onboard. You usually use your own mobile phone for that. And so um, that's the best kind of use case is being able to set that up out of the box um, as the onboarding product from HR service delivery and then utilizing the, the candidates or new hires own cell phone to take care of it because it is mobile optimized. Yep. Okay, I think we may have time for one more. HR workflows for a target implementation org would seem to be a prerequisite for transition and implementation of the ServiceNow HR platform. Please talk to your experience with that transition process, effort, duration, et cetera. Yeah, so this to me sounds like a question about, hey, how much of the to be process needs to be <laughs> fixed and defined before it is even fixed, before you get into the technology side? So I, I love this question because it's the majority of the work um, that our teams do. And, and that's kind of why I was talking about the structure of the team. We have um, very strong product managers and business systems analysts on the IT side. And then um, on our HR side, for example, we have uh, process experts and others um, because this is the biggest um, sort of rub when it comes to prioritizing projects. The tech team, our tech team can only do so many things on the tech side if that process isn't defined. So um, our experience with the transition process is that we've spent um, anywhere from, you know, several months to um, kind of a, a quarter or two defining the processes, getting them locked in, and then handing off to the tech side. And typically for the HR product, at least, and maybe Nate, you can speak on your end, but for us, the development work does not take very long. The development work is, you know, in a, in a matter of weeks, it's done in the, in the QA and testing. Um, but this is the part that requires the most structural and um, sort of philosophical alignment between the functional and IT teams. Um, 
because again, the tech can't solve most of the problems. <laughs> it's really the process. So yeah, that, that, that would be my answer there. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you for the insight, Samea. Just for a note for all participants, we've got a log of all the questions. And so we can take a look at them. And if there's anything specific we can get back to, if we did not have the opportunity to do uh, the coverage on the Q&A. To close things out, just want to reinforce that uh, all the webinars that we have are on demand. So please reach out uh, and, and provide, uh, take a look and see if there's an interesting topic uh, outside of this area. Uh, and again, if there's any additional questions, please reach out to your account exec. But uh, we do appreciate your time and carving out the hour today and hope you have a great rest of the week.